Okay, this video is on measures of central tendency and box plots. Now, anytime you have a data set, a set of numbers, it's often very useful to be able to summarize that data set using just one number, to describe it just using one number. And often the number that you want to use to describe it is the number that identifies the center of the data set. What's the middle of the data set? And any number that describes the middle of a data set or the center of a data set we call that a measure of central tendency or an average. Measures of central tendency are just different types of averages. Now the three most common measures of central tendency are called the mean, the median, and the mode. Now the mean is the one, the, the mean is the measure of central tendency that's probably most familiar to most people and is the one that a lot of people just think of when they think average, they think of the mean. And uh, it's the one where you just take however many numbers that you have, you add them all up, and then divide by however many numbers you have. So if you want to find the mean uh, test score, for example, you would take all your test scores, add them up, and divide by however many tests you have. Um, there are symbols for the mean. Two different ones that we're going to see in this class. This is one of them. It's, it's red X bar, just an X with a bar on the top. And there's another one that looks like this. It's kind of a lowercase u with a little tail on it. And that's a uh, lowercase Greek letter called mu. So anytime you see one of those symbols, you know you're talking about the mean of a data set. Median refers to the middle value of a data set. And specifically, it's the value that's in the middle of a data set after you've ordered all of the data points in order from least to greatest. So let's take a look at how we might go about finding the median value of a data set. So let's say I have a set of numbers 4, 7, 9, 15, and 24. Well, since the median is the number in the middle, and since my numbers are already in order from least to greatest, well, I just want to look at my data set and I find this number here, 9, is the number that's in the middle. I've got two values below that number, I've got two values above that number, so 9 is going to be my median. Now, what if I had a data set, though, that didn't have an odd number of values in it? So there wasn't actually a single number in the middle. So let's say my data set looked like this. 4, 7, 9, 15, 24, and 40. Well, now I've got a data set that has six numbers in it. There's not a single number in the middle. And in this case, what I do is I find my two numbers that are in the middle, in this case 9 and 15, and I take the mean of my two middle numbers. So to find the median of this data set, my median is going to be equal to 9 plus 15 divided by 2. And let's see, 9 and 15 are 24, so 24 divided by 2 is 12. So the median for this data set is going to be 12. Notice that the median for this data set is not actually a number that's in the data set. And you often find that when you have an even number of values in your data set. The mode is just the number that appears most frequently in a data set. Some data sets have two modes, in which case you call those data sets bimodal. And occasionally you have a data set that doesn't have a mode at all. It's just got a single, you know, all the values only appear one time, in which case that data set would have no mode. So let's take a look at example number one here. It says, find the mean, median, and mode of the salaries for the corporate employees listed below. Which measure of central tendency appears to most accurately represent the set of data? Okay, so if I take these, one, two, three, four, five, if I take these six values in my data set, these six salary values, and if I type them into my calculator, if I type them into a list in my calculator, then I can calculate the mean and the median and the mode for this data set. So if I type those into my calculator and I use my calculator and I calculate the mean, I see that the mean for this data set is going to be 
$667 approximately. The median is going to be the number in the middle, and I notice since I have an even number, my middle number, these are already in order from least to greatest, my middle number is going to be the mean of these two values here, 59,000 and 60,000, so my median is going to be 59,500. And my mode, since I don't have a number that appears more than once in my data set, I don't have a mode. Now, what if instead of these six values, these six employees, what if we had a seventh employee, maybe Mr. Garcia, and let's say that this seventh employee has a salary of $1,400,000, which I notice is a good bit more than all the salary of all the other employees. Maybe this is the CEO. Well, if I calculate now the mean, median, and mode for this new data set, Let's see how things may have changed. So this is my original data set. And this is going to be with my new additional employee here. So if I add this into my list and I calculate my mean again, my mean is going to change to 246857 dollars approximately. So adding in this $1,400,000 salary changes the mean. My median, I can see that here, now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got seven values, so my median value is going to be this value right here that's in the middle now, so $60,000, that's my median value. And once again, I see that I don't have a mode at all because none of my values appears more than once. So if you take a look at the the mean, median, and mode for each of these two different data sets. You can see that the mean, it changed quite a bit when I added in this extra value. And in fact, this value, since it's so much larger than all of the other values, it has a particular name. It's called an outlier. We're going to talk about outliers a little bit more as we go. But notice that when I added in this, this outlier, this extreme value, it changed the mean quite a bit. The median not so much, and I have you know the same value for the mode in both data sets, which is to say no mode. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that, and you'll notice uh, in your notes there it asks, how do extreme values or outliers affect the measures of central tendency? And I'm going to leave that for you to fill out. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in class tomorrow. Example number two. Owen's a member of the student council and wants to present, present data about backpack safety to the school board. So he collects data on the weights of backpacks of 30 randomly chosen students. So here are the 30 different weights in pounds of the backpacks of 30 different students. How much does the typical backpack weigh at Owen's school? Well, I'm talking about a typical value for the backpack. I'm talking about a measure of central tendency. And I can calculate using these 30 numbers, my mean, median, and mode. So if I type all 30 of these numbers into a list in my calculator and calculate the mean, then I get 10.2 pounds. The median, since I've got all of my data points are already in order from least to greatest, I just need to find the middle value. So since I've got 30, let's see, that means I'm going to have 15 on, in, in the top half and 15 in the bottom. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 15. Here's the middle, so this is my 15th value, this is my 16th value. So my median is going to be the average of these two values, which is just going to be the average of 9 plus 9 divided by 2, which is going to be 9 pounds. And let's see my mode. I've got 5 7s, 5 9s, 6 10s. Looks like my mode is going to be 10 pounds. Well, I can see my mean, my median, my mode, they're all pretty close to the same value. And I guess that's a pretty good way, if I want to summarize my data set with just this one number, that's a pretty good, you know, 9 or 10 pounds is about the way I would, I would summarize the, the average value of the weight of a backpack at Owen School. But I might also want to describe this data set in a little more detail. And one way that I can do that is using something called a box and whisker plot or a box plot. And what box and whisker plots do is they illustrate something called 
the variability or the spread of a set of data. In other words, not just what's the, the center point of the data, but how spread out are the data. So the way we go about graphing a, drawing a box and whisker plot is now that we've found the median here of our data set, I want to find the median of the top half of my data set and the median of the bottom half of my data set. So if I find the median of the top half of my data set, then I'm going to find the median of all these values. I've got 15 values here, so let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. This one is going to be the median of this half of my data set. That's the median of my whole data set. Median of the bottom half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My eighth data point here. So I've got 7 below and 7 above. So this is going to be the median of my lower half of my data set. So essentially what I've got here is I've got these three points here that divide my data set into four sections. And if I can draw a picture of this, I've got a number line that I've drawn down here going from 0 to 40. And let's see. Let me go ahead and put 20 is in the middle, 30 is about right here, and 10 is about right here. So my median value, 9, that's going to be about right here. Let me put a little mark right there. This value here, the median of the upper part of my data set, is going to be 10. That's going to be right here. And the median of my lower part is going to be at 7. So let's see, that's at about right here. My, I, want to, I want to also put two other values on here, which is the maximum value, which is 33. 33 is going to go about right here. And also the minimum value, which is 3, and that's going to be about right here. Now, I've got all these five different points here, and a box and whisker plot looks like this. Notice that now I've got a visual representation of my data set, my mean is this point right here. And then I've got these other points right here. And let's go ahead and name them now. These other points, in addition to the maximum and the minimum, which are right here and right here, this is my median. This median point is also called, is also called one of my quartile points. This is a quartile point. And these other two points are quartile points. This point right here is called the first quartile. My median point is also called the second quartile. And this is called my third quartile. So this, these five numbers here that I've got, my minimum number, my first quartile, my second quartile, or my median, my third quartile, and my maximum, those five numbers are what we call the five number summary for a data set. So the five number summary just means minimum, first quartile, second quartile, which is also the median, third quartile, and the maximum. All right. So in order to come up with the five points, the five numbers in the five number summary, essentially what you do is first you want to arrange your data in order and then find the median. And that was what we did for our data set up here for the backpack data. I've got all these data points. I arrange them in order and I find the median, which is the middle point. Then I want to find the median of the first half and the second half of the data set. In other words, here's the first half of my data set, all of the data points that lie below the median, and I want to find the median of that first half of the data set. I want to find the median of the second half of the data set, all the data points that lie above the median. And after I find those two, now after I find those two points, now my data set is divided into 
quartiles. Specifically, it's divided into four quartiles. And Q1, Q2, and Q3, that's this point here, this point here, and this point here, those are called the quartile points. Note that Q1 is the median of the first half of the data set. Q2 is the median of the entire data set. Q3 is the median of the second half of the data set. The difference between Q1 and Q3, in other words, this distance here, that's what we call the interquartile range. And the difference between the maximum value, which would be here, and the minimum value, which would be here, is just called the range. Now you'll see on your notes there are a few more uh, things that we're going to talk about with regard to box and whiskers plot. We'll take a look at those in class tomorrow.